Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about uh, March 17th League of Legends DFS slate. Um, it's a four game slate. Finally, we get a four, full loaded four game slate. Unlike yesterday, it was supposed to be a four game slate until I think one LPL game got canceled or postponed. And then uh, another Korean LCK game got uh uh, one team for had to forfeit that match because Fred and Breon had some COVID issues internally. So, yeah. So I think it's great to have, you know, these players back, um, you know, in, in full strength. Um, hopefully that, you know, these games continue. Um, hopefully, you know, COVID calms down in China and Korea because I think they're going through a lot over there in those countries, uh, respectively. So hopefully, it, you know, also hopefully it stays there and then doesn't come over, you know, to the United States. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we, you know, continue to make improvements here. Hopefully things get better here. So anyway, <laughs> after, um, so yeah, let's dive into the LCK, I mean, LPL matchups. Actually, let's go into the LCK matchups first, because I think the LCK matchups are a little more interesting today uh, than usual. So DRX versus DK, Dawan Kia. Um, Dawan Kia is a slight favorite at minus 176. Um, DRX is actually an underdog. Um, DRX and DK are both in top four, top five, um, trying to make it to the playoffs. Um, they are currently, you know, in the playoffs, but, you know, I think they're kind of in the last week of the, of the regular spring split to trying to improve themselves before going into the playoffs. So I think... <clears throat> This is going to be a very important um, week for both of these teams because Damon Kia, um, while they, you know, have been a very good team over the last couple of years um, with everybody, but this year, you know, they have a new top laner in the bottom lane so that they're trying to prove that they can still compete at the highest level in Korea, but it hasn't looked very good overall the past couple of weeks. Um, so they're trying to bounce back. But DRX is an interesting one because they had a bad season early in the split and then they're bouncing, bouncing back and they're in the top four right now. So, but for me, at least, I mean, this is an expected starting lineup. I don't expect this to change at all. Um, so I don't think there is any substitution risk, maybe except for the top laner for Dawan Kia, but Birdall has been starting all games, all series for the last month uh, or two. So Hoya is the other top laner for Damon Kia, but I don't expect them to play in the series. So anyway, so um, I feel like DRX, the weakness for them has been in the jungle position. Piosik, his level of, and, and then his level of uh, consistency is something that I question. Kingen was actually playing pretty bad as well in the top lane, but the last couple of weeks he has shown that he, has improved and he is in better form. Um, he actually won a player of the match the other day that shows that he has come alive, um, but still like in the, in the jungling position and then in the uh, mid, uh, mid, mid position in Zika, I think those are the two players that I would be concerned about because depth and barrel in the bottom lane, especially barrel. I mean, he came from Damon Kia. This is going to be another kind of like playing against a former team. So he'll be motivated to play and beat down one Kia. Um, but Deft and Barrel have been probably one of the best duos in the bottom lane, other than T1, Sakuma, uh, Yushi, and Karia, in my opinion. Um, so Deft and Barrel have been really good. Um, and they typically struggle with teams that can exploit them in the bottom lane, in my opinion. If Barrel cannot do anything, cannot roam, cannot help the jungler, that's when they struggle a bit. Um, but as, so does that mean that, you know, let, let's look at Damon Kia. Does Dalman Kia have that strength in the bottom lane? I don't think so. I think their strength has been in the jungle uh, for Canyon and then in the mid lane, Showmaker, and the second as a secondary uh, weapon for them. Um, and then in the top lane, they've Birdall has struggled tremendously um, here and there. I think Kingen is definitely in a better form, uh, you know, in better form than Birdall is. So I give edge to DRX in the top lane. In the jungle position, obviously, Canyon is the best um, in the LCK, so I give an edge to Dalman Kia. And then Showmaker actually has not been playing pretty, playing as well as he he did the past couple of years. Um, I don't know if that's due to the fact that he has to focus uh, and allocate much resources to the bottom lane and then the top lane, 
and he kind of um, has to play off of those. Um, I don't know, but just just like Showmaker has shown that some uh, shown some vulnerabilities uh, so far in the split. Um, I think he has made some mistakes the past couple games that I saw. Um, that could have that could that costed costed them the game actually. Um, so, uh, but Zika actually is not that scary either. So I think that's more of a wash in my opinion. But in the bottom lane, like I said, DRX. I feel like they only struggle with teams that have very strong AD carry and support position players, but Duck Dom and Kellen, I mean, they do not scare me at all. So they <clears throat> actually been quite a weak duo. I think it's just that their, uh, you know, deficiencies have been masked by Damon Kia's willingness to uh, put a lot of resources in, into the bottom lane and, and play through the bottom lane. Um, like, like for example, their jungler, their mid laner, and the top laner would come to the bottom lane to support Duck Dom and Kell and kind of give them the, you know, edge to to be able to snowball and to to kind of go from there from the game strategy standpoint. So, I just feel like the RX um, going up against the weak bottom lane and Dom and Kia. I like the RX tonight, um, two to one uh, to win to upset Dom and Kia in my opinion. So I'm going to put that in writing here. Uh, DRX upsets DK 2-1 to one here. Um, I'm going to say, like I said, Theft and Barrel should exert dominance over Duck Dom and Kellen. DRX only struggles against teams with great bottom lane. DK does not have that. Also, Kengen is in better form than Birdall, in my opinion. Uh, a little concerned about the jungle and mid synergy um, from Canyon Showmaker over Piosik and Zika, but Piosik has been playing a little better lately. So I trust DRX more. Yeah, and like I said, the recent form has it's favoring DRX for me at least. That one Kia has struggled a bit. Um, like I said, um, actually straight struggled a lot. Um, some in some games that I've seen uh the last couple weeks. All right, the second game in the LCK is Guangdong Freaks versus Hanwha Life. Hanwha Life is projected and I believe will finish the last, finish last in the, in the LCK this spring split. And that's kind of um, the, uh, the project projection that I had about that team, just based on that fact, based on the fact that they didn't make any big offseason acquisition. They really are foregoing this season, in my opinion, by you know, by, you know, by the lack of offseason moves that they made. Um, so I, I fully expected them to finish last. And I feel it looks like that they're, it's going to happen here. Um, so, and Guangdong Freaks actually needs this win um, to be able to finish in top five or top six, um, you know, to, for playoff push and all that. So I like Guangdong Freaks here to win. Um, they really need to, need to win this. Um, and they have been playing, yeah, yeah. I mean, really good. I mean, they, you saw the T1's match against Guangdong Freaks. Guangdong Freaks almost actually beat them um, in that matchup, uh, you know, to ruin T1's winning streak. So I fully expect Guangdong Freaks to win. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, some of the players I would focus is actually Keen in the top lane over Dudu. And then Faith actually has been playing really well uh, overall. But I actually think Karis has been playing pretty decent for Hanwha Life. In my opinion, he is one of the two best players on that team. So I just feel like Faith may, may struggle there. But Teddy, I think Teddy's going to be a star in that matchup here today over Sam D and Vista. Sam D and Vista have been probably the weakest duo bottom lane, in my opinion, in DLCK. So Teddy should have a feast today. Um, but yeah, I like Guangdong Freaks to take care of business over Hanwha Life today. Kongdong Freaks really needs this win to get them going, get them over the hump. And Hanwha Life in bad form projected 
to finish last in Nels K. Teddy over Sam D tonight. All right. In China, though, um, it's going to be, they're going to be two close, close matchups today, too. Um, JDG is a slight favorite over Rare Adam at minus 164. So let's look at the roster he's here. Um, the same starters, Cube Land, Strive Eye Boy, Yuyanja, and then 369, Kanavi, Yagao, Hope, and Missing. Um, it's like it's gonna be an interesting matchup because as you guys know, JDG has been in but in much much better form this season uh, compared to last season. And then rare Adam actually <laughs> is on a very long winning streak, I believe. So let's check that out real quick. Um, I do want to show you how I mean rare Adam has been under the radar, um, you know, getting these wins over uh some good teams along the way. Um, I think I picked them over. Um, I think I picked the other team playing against Rare Adam last time out, but Rare Adam actually won again. So here, as you see, I mean, they've won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven out of the last eight. And um, even the one they lost, they lost to OMG two to one. So it was in a you know three game series. But look at all these other games. I mean, they've won two to zero, two to zero, two to zero, two to zero, two to zero. The like the last five wins, they won two to zero. And they beat, it's not like they beat, you know, scrub teams. They beat Weibo Gaming, who's, it was, who's been on a skid a little bit. Um, and then they beat Ultra Prime. All right, that's not that impressive. WE, okay, they're bad. FPX, they're pretty good. They're like mediocre team, right? And they beat RNG, two to zero. So that is quite impressive in my opinion, I think. And then JDG has been pretty good themselves as well. Uh, beating, thunder, taking care of business against the worst team in the LPL and Thunder Talk, but then they beat JDG, they beat Victory 5, and they beat Ultra Prime just like uh, Rare Adam did, um, but they lost to BLG. So uh, I think that's going to be a really good match. Um, if I had to choose, I would just want to look at the roster real quick. I think I'm going to have to favor... It's going to be an interesting one, I think. Let me see. The The... The fact that they lost to OMG and then JDG lost to BLG. Yeah, I mean, look at Rare Adams record now, eight and six. Wow. Because they were like here. <laughs> to begin the season and this is quite impressive they're just surging through up this up the up through the standings um let's see who's been playing really well i just want to see for i haven't been watching much of rare atom games but i just want to see recently as to who's been playing well and through the bottom lane, top lane. Mid. Yeah, ADC and top. So the bottom lane and the top lane is where the kill participation is high. So do I think hope and missing? And then three six, three six nine has not been very impressive to me. Um, Cube actually has been playing really well. The Kanavi obviously outperforms Leanne, I think. Yeah, gal, little question mark. I want to compare Hope and Missing versus uh, I Boy and Yuyanja real quick. Let's see. You know what? I think I'm going to go. Sorry, guys. I'm just thinking in my head as to what's more important. Uh... 
just want to see who they beat here. LMG. EDG somewhere. TS. I think I'm gonna go JDG um two to uh two to one. But I think um rare Adam is definitely a live dog. And if you think rare Adam is gonna win, it's gonna have to go through the bottom lane and the top lane, mostly top lane. I think 369 makes too many mistakes for my taste. He's been the most in inconsistent player on this JD squad, JDG squad. So I think Cube is going to have a field day over 369 today um, if you think Rare Adam is going to win. Um, but I think I'm still going to pick JDG because I think Hope and Missing can definitely match up well against Iboy and Yuyanja. And then as long as 369 does not feed Cube in the laning phase, I think he'll be okay. And then I trust Kanavi more over Leanne. And then I think Strive and Yagao are kind of like a wash. So as long as... Um, you know, this top half holds up their bargain. I think Hope and Missing can definitely match up well against Ivo and Yuyanja. Because I, th I think that's the only way that they can beat Rare Adam. The second matchup uh, is between Team WE, the worst team in the league. Thunder Talk, the, I'd say they're both fighting for that with the worst team uh, label <laughs> um, in the LPL. But so it could be, could turn out to be a clown fiesta. Could be you know, could turn out to be like a kill uh, fest, but you know, I just, I just feel like these are both teams are really bad. Um, but, and, and then, and neither, either of these teams has the potential to win. I mean, I don't know if much analysis is required because they've been both really bad, but if I have to guess, I'm going to have to go with Thunder Talk, I think. Um, I just haven't been that, that impressed with um, WE, in my opinion. I know that Bayshon came in late and later in the split to kind of save that team, but really haven't haven't done so. I mean, I just feel like he hasn't been that impressive. Um, but whereas I think Thunder Talk has shown me some improvements um, between Chieftain and UCAL. So I like Thunder Talk today, I think, to upset uh, the team WE. But like I said, I mean... Both teams are live dogs or live live teams to win. So um, TT upsets WE two to one. I like uh, Chieftain and UCAL more than Beijing and Xie. Both teams are poop B. Both teams in play for. GPP. Yeah, so I think the, the kill upside is there for both of these LPL, uh, LPL matchups, I think. Um, JDG tends to play really fast, and Rare Adam has, has been fa playing faster recently when they are, when they've been on, uh, you know, on that winning streak that they are on. And then Team WE and Thunder Talk, I think both teams know that they can win this matchup, so they're gonna I think they're gonna notch up a kill upside today. I think that's gonna turn out to be a kill fest, I think. And then in the LCK, I mean, yeah, I think Damon Kia plays so slow. Um, but I mean, the DRX plays slower. Uh, I mean, slow as well. So I think that kills upside is limited. Um, but it's definitely worth it. You know, worth playing. I think DRX. If you think DRX will win, but if you think Damon Kia is gonna win, as they are the favorite, I think that kill upside is even more limited because Damon Kia plays really slow. And the second matchup, Kwangdong Freaks, I think this is going to be more than 23 kills total. I think that I definitely go over the total kills here. Um, I think that's going to turn out to be more of like a freely uh, open play, you know, more like a open, uh, you know, play where they constantly get in team fights and stuff. I don't think it's going to be as high as like LPL matchups, but I think it's going to be a more bloody LCK matchup given, you know, between these two. So. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, let me know on Twitter or on Discord. If you like the video, please hit the like button or subscribe button. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you guys, you know, at the top of the standings tonight. Have a good one. Bye.